Hello my friends, Ryan here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about 18 hidden facts about the F-15 that you probably didn't know. The 18th is a bonus, so stay for that. Before we get going, if you'd pop over to Patreon, Max Afterburner on Patreon, I've got some awesome stuff that I'm uploading on there. It's just popping if I don't say so myself. Dogfight videos, behind the scenes videos, content preparation, how I get ready for these videos. And you can actually comment on some of the preparation to help me include certain things that you want me to include in the videos that are coming up in the weeks of ahead. So pop over to Patreon for that. And then maxafterburner.co if you want some threads that are gonna make your girlfriend jealous. She's gonna be like, wait, you look too awesome. Where Wearing that, you shouldn't be wearing that. Everybody's going to be giving you attention, or your boyfriend, whatever the case may be. Pop over to maxafterburner.co. Would love for you to check out some of the shirts and merch over there. With that said, let's dive into the first fact of the F-15. And it comes down to the speed. The F-15 can fly at over Mach 2.5, and that's the F-15C configuration. This thing literally screams. For me personally, the fastest I've been in an F-15 is Mach 1.3, and what I ended up doing with my weapon systems operator in that F-15E was out over the deserts of Idaho. We were about a 500 foot or so off the deck. We pulled basically straight up got up to about 54,000 feet, pushed the jet over, and then went into max afterburner, and then started going downhill. And as we're going downhill, it's like you're on a bike going downhill. But in this case, your bike is carrying four missiles and uh, more firepower than a small tank. At the end of the day, we were able to get the thing up to Mach 1.3, and it was really cool as we got closer to the Earth, seeing the Earth just how fast they would fly by. Because when you're up at altitude, it doesn't seem like you're actually going that fast. When you go through a sonic boom at altitude, it's just kind of like a non-event. You're like, oh, okay, things just got a little bit quieter up here in the cockpit. But then when you get closer to the Earth and you're going that fast, it is incredible. So the fact that the F-15C can go up to Mach 2.5 you know, almost a full one Mach faster than what I was going is pretty mind blowing. But hey, Mach 1.3, it's not too bad. Give me some credit here, my ego needs it. The second thing we'll talk about with the F-15E is that with the afterburners cooking, so in full grunt, as we like to call it, max afterburner power, you may, you may know that I kind of like max afterburner power. At the end of the day, you've got over 60,000 pounds of thrust, in some cases up to 70,000 pounds of thrust because the F-15E and the F-15C have an override switch to go into an even greater stage of max afterburner. They told us that was for combat use only and it's actually wired shut. So you'd actually, while you're flying, you have to break the wire flip up a guarded red switch, and then go into override for the afterburner. They said there's no guarantee that the afterburner will work afterwards, but it could give you up to almost 0.3 Mach faster. So imagine you're at Mach 2.5, and you're like, oh, I feel like I need a little more juice here. And you pop that switch, and then you're at Mach 2.8, almost Mach 3 in an F-15. This is pretty much exactly how Maverick felt during his speed test in the hypersonic jet. The third fact about the F-15 is the thing can basically go straight up. So I flew an F-15E without conformal fuel tanks. That's kind of the configuration of what some of the F-15EXs will have. And as soon as I pulled up after takeoff, I basically stood the thing on its burner cans and went straight up. I did a split S, leveled off, and then I had enough energy to do another one. So think about it in a dogfight. You go straight up, you level off in your split S, you're going the other direction, and then you just get a little bit more airspeed, maybe 350 if you can, 400, and then you go up again. So you could basically go from zero to close to 30,000 feet after takeoff, directly after takeoff. That's how much thrust this bad boy has. The fourth point is that this thing was actually recorded in the 80s as going from zero to almost 100,000 feet in three and a half minutes. And if that isn't impressive, I just can't help you. The fifth thing is that the mafia was actually involved 
in the making of the F-15, but it's not the mafia you're thinking. It's not the mafia that ruled Vegas, ran around with Tommy guns during Prohibition. No, it's not that mafia. It's the fighter mafia. And this involves John Boyd and Robin Olds. Now, if you don't know, John Boyd is one of the original gangsters of the Air Force. He's essentially the guy who told the top brass to shove it when they had plans to build jets that were like the F-105, the F-106, the F-4, jets that just didn't have the capability to be fast and maneuverable like the F-16 and F-15. The fighter mafia wanted jets that kept them alive in combat and put them in the driver's seat when it came to prosecuting and executing enemy aircraft that were directly in front of them, behind them, to the side of them. The ability to maneuver and make things happen, which they didn't have the ability to do and things like the F-105 Thunder Chief and to a lesser extent the F-4. The F-4 was pretty good but at the end of the day the fighter mafia knew that jets needed to be built with the pilot in mind. They needed to be built with the pilot having the ability to just connect to that jet and become one with that aircraft. And John Boyd is definitely the leader of the fighter mafia. I mean essentially like mainstream Air Force has disowned John Boyd and it's only recently that they're beginning to bring back John Boyd and his legacy. There's different buildings on Nellis Air Force Base where the aggressors operate out of and the aggressor squadron, they're supposed to think like the good guys and try to defeat them, which is kind of what John Boyd did. He was positively disruptive where he constantly tried to find cracks in things that everybody thought was solid. He tried to find ways that we had weaknesses and that's exactly what the aggressors do. So the aggressor squadrons at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada have started to bring Bring back the memory and the ethos of John Boyd because at the end of the day it's not about being told you're right all the time like some of the top brass they want to hear that the Emperor is doing just great even when the Emperor has no clothes on and John Boyd was one to definitely point out hey Emperor bro you're you're naked and that brings us to point number six because of its lightweight durable ability to maneuver it is the number one air superiority fighter in the entire world and it's built for air superiority first so even the f-15e is built for air superiority even though it has a weapon systems operator and is great at air to ground and that's kind of the primary driver of the mud hens design it is an air superiority fighter first and it's going to take out pretty much anything that you can think of beyond visual range and within visual range because it's purpose built the seventh fact is that over 100 f-15s have been built in japan and counting we actually contracted out the ability for f-15s to be built by mitsubishi and some other japanese manufacturers this allows for Japan to have its own internal defense force and some of the contracts that were made after World War II was that Japan was only meant to have aircraft for defense, defense of the homeland. So with China being so close, it just makes sense for Japan to have F-15s in their arsenal. Moving on to fact number eight, the F-15's internal cannon can fire over 6,000 rounds per minute. That's about 100 bullets per second. And the key with this is you don't want to do incredibly short bursts because the gun was designed, the M61 Vulcan gun, the 20 millimeter, was designed to shoot 100 bullets at a time. That gives you way more chances in a dogfight to get a hit. So you've got that many bullets flying out there with the potential to hit that enemy aircraft. And when you do a short burst, it essentially stops that gun prior to its full rotation of 100 bullets. So we were always told not to be quick on the trigger, but to give it a nice, solid one second burst. And the way that we would do it is we would go track, which means fixate on the target, put the pipper on the target, shoot, pull the trigger smoothly as you're keeping the pressure on the stick exactly the same. Kind of like how a sniper would take a breath and hold it prior to taking a shot and then track at the end. And that track at the end is essentially the follow through that you would get while you're shooting free throws or shooting a three pointer during a basketball game. It just continues to allow those bullets to flow towards the same point during that entire second of you squeezing the trigger. Instead of you squeezing the trigger and maybe slightly moving the stick as you do it, and then those bullets spray off target and you get a miss. No one wants that. Fact number nine is this thing actually doesn't even need a gun. Well, that's not true. All aircraft need a gun, and that lesson was learned during Vietnam when they sent F-4s over there, and they didn't actually have 
a gun. F-4s over there were being shot down and decimated by MiG-21s because their missiles were misfiring and malfunctioning and they didn't have a gun to back it up. So Robin Olds literally had his buddies back in machine shops at Air Force bases around the US make a gun pod that was shipped over to the F-4s in Vietnam that was placed on the belly of the F-4. Those were used to shoot down MiG-21s until they were able to internally mount the gun inside the F-4. Even though I joke around and say the F-15 doesn't need a gun, it does, but its ability to target beyond visual range is incredible. New F-15s have actually been outfitted with ASA radars, and these radars are a fixed array radar that allow you to target aircraft and see the battle space, to see the airfield real time out in front of you and see aircraft that you might not be able to see with older radars. Fact number 11 is this bad boy was actually made to deliver satellites and air launched cruise missiles. So you could attach things to it like the Storm Shadow cruise missile and NASA actually has small satellites that can be launched from an F-15 getting up to altitude and then launching that satellite, giving it essentially a platform to go to even higher heights, which is Pretty incredible. Fact number 12, let's talk about the F-15's first kill. Well, as you may guess, along with the F-16, the F-15's first kill came from the Israeli Air Force. And that was in 1979 where the Israeli Air Force shot down a slew of MiG-21s and MiG-25s over Lebanon. So the F-15 was essentially combat tested within a year of rolling off the assembly line. And there's just nothing like that on the job training Battlefield testing just goes to show that the fighter mafia knew what they were doing when they insisted on this jet being built for dogfighting and for operating to the pilot's desires. And that leads us to fact number 13, the record, the air to air record, the wins versus losses of the F-15 are 100 to zero. This thing puts Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather to shame because <laughs> their records will never get to the numbers that the F-15 has gotten to and counting. I mean, there's dogfights that haven't been recorded that we'll probably never hear about. So the official record is slightly over 100 wins to zero losses, but you can bet there is a few more wins that haven't exactly been added to the scoreboard. Fact number 14 is that F-15s are essentially vital to any air to ground mission. While the F-15 itself might not be carrying air to ground ordnance, any air to ground mission that's executed, any operational plan that has an air to ground component is going to include F-15s. Even when it comes to defending the Taiwan Straits, that's one of the first jets that will arrive on station to defend Taiwan because the ability for these to focus on air power and air superiority is so much greater than say an F-16. Just because of the size of the radar, the way that this thing gets up to altitude due to having two F-16 engines is just unparalleled. Fact number 15 about the F-15, this is gonna be a special fact, and that is in the squadron I was in at Seymour Johnson, the 335th Chiefs, one of those F-15Es actually got an air-to-air -air kill with a bomb. That's right, they dropped a 2,000 pound JDAM on a Hind helicopter in Iraq that was in flight. I remember talking to some of those involved and they said that they saw the helicopter with the blade spinning on the ground. It seemed like there were special operations, Iraqi forces, and at the time that was the enemy, they were getting out of the helicopter. So they said, let's take this thing out before they can hurt any of the coalition troops. So they dropped their weapon and as the weapon is in flight, the helicopter lifted off and started to move. So the weapon systems operator dragged the laser to follow the helicopter and the way that the bomb worked, it went right through the helicopter as it was in mid-flight. But since the helicopter was in flight, that's counted as an air-to-air -air kill, not as an air-to-ground kill. And that's why there's an F-15E at Seymour Johnson that has a big green star on the side, which is the telltale sign that the crew and that fighter jet itself got an air-to-air -air kill. Fact number 16, and this is one that is near and dear to my heart since I've operated with this thing many a times, 
and that is that the F-15E can fly feet off the ground. I mean, 100 feet if you want it to, using a terrain-following radar. I operated the terrain-following radar many times while deployed in combat. And the key to this bad boy is that you have protection as you're flying over ridges, you're flying over massive mountains, and you might not be able to see all these ridges because it's so dark. You have night vision goggles on, but in a lot of areas around the world, if there's no ambient light, even with night vision goggles, you won't be able to see anything. And the awesome part about it is you can actually select a smooth or a hard ride. So with the smooth ride, you're gonna bump up a little bit to altitude as you go over certain ridges. With the hard ride, you're literally gonna stay tucked down, but it is gonna push you over and sometimes pull negative Gs. But just the fact that it has that feature makes the F-15E essentially a Tesla. Fact number 17, and you might have seen this before, but there's actually footage of an Israeli F-15 that flew with one wing after a mid-air collision during a dogfight. You can see fuel pouring out of the fuselage of the aircraft, but the F-15 continues to fly, and that's just how stable this jet is. It has what's called a rudder aileron interconnect. So even with one aileron gone, the rudders were able to make up for that and keep the F-15 in a position where it could actually land. So it got to land and be repaired, and that F-15 actually flew again, which just shows the stability of this aircraft. And I even noticed that when I get into dogfights into super slow speed flying regimes, and maybe some jets might go into a flat spin. Goose, Top Gun 1, we're looking at you. But when some jets are in that flat spin after a dogfight, they just they won't get out of it. But what I noticed with the F-15 is if you just kind of release the controls, the jet sort of flies out of spins. I'm sure there's situations where it wouldn't and you would definitely have to act like in an inverted spin type scenario. Don't worry, I was inverted. But in most spin situations, the F-15 is gonna be able to fly out of it and that just speaks to its stability. And fact number 18 about the F-15 is that it has a gun that is canted up two degrees. So what that means is during a dogfight, you don't have to be pointed directly at the enemy aircraft in front of you in order to get a shot off. And that's huge because it puts you in the position where you can get more shots, you can be more aggressive, and the jet doesn't have to be pointing directly at that aircraft for the gun funnel and the gun solution to be on them. It also makes it worse for air to ground, believe it or not, because you have to be even steeper in order to get a shot. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about about the F-15. Check out my Patreon, it's Max Afterburner. It'd be great to have you over there. I've got dogfight videos over there, behind the scenes footage, fighter pilot mindset, all kinds of awesome stuff. And then maxafterburner.co if you wanna grab some supersonic threads. Thanks for being here, my friend. We'll catch you on the next video.